Hey guys, and welcome to the Hellfire cast. Today's episode will uh, be sort of a conclusion, a finale, if you will, to the opening days of Mario Kart 8. And we're just going to discuss the game as a whole. With me today, I have the Hell Dragon. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Less of that, please, if we've only just started. And from H4, we have Month. Uh, thank you, Tom. Good to be here. Go check out hpod.net. Thank you, thank you. Pluggerific. Had to get one in. <laughs> I guess we should start with how uh, we felt like on the lead up to the game. Month, I'm going to throw this one at you to start with. Uh, how was the pre-hype for you? Um, it was nice to think about a game that was going to make me play the Wii U again. <laughs> Damn, man. I mean, I haven't been playing anything on it. I'm mostly a PC gamer. That's where I come from. I play games mostly on PC. Yeah. And everything else is pretty much like, well, this game is just so good that I have to play it on a console. Yeah. And for the Wii U, the only games that I've really enjoyed thoroughly on that so far have been Pikmin 3. Yeah, good game. And Mario Kart 8. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, and Nintendo Land, when you get, and get at least three to five people together, but... Any fewer than that, it's just not it's just not good. Yeah. What about you, Hell Dragon? Um, to be honest, I wasn't really getting much into the Mario Kart 8 hype because at the time uh, I didn't have a Wii U. But then when I got one donated to me by a fan, I had this strange feeling of justifying the Wii U's existence. <laughs> yeah, she did. I don't know where that came from. So when I finally got around to it, uh, when that you know arrived to me. I figured, you know what, they're doing the uh, whole free game thing oh, yeah. with Mario Kart 8, so I figured, you know, that's when I would jump in and give it another shot, because my last attempt with it was Mario Kart 7, we had problems, <laughs> Very but much I so. figured this time, now that I know what was uh, coming up, you know, I figured I'd give it another shot, and for the most part, it's been pretty decent. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm always hyped for a Mario Kart, whether it be the SD or HD, but... um. Th- at the beginning, it didn't really like strike me as anything super special. I mean, they showed off the anti-gravity and whatnot, and that looked fun. But it just looked like an extension of what they did in Seven. But um, as it got like closer and closer to release date, and they showed more courses and whatnot, hype kind of went through the roof. And I'm like, holy shit, this is Nintendo's first high definition Mario Kart, and. I'll be honest, I didn't really care for All-Stars Racing Transform that much. It's a good game, but I love Nintendo's franchises more than Sega, so obviously... Well, I'm just... me too, yeah, I'll admit that up front. Like, I'm not sitting there going, man... Is, is there is there any debate that, that Nintendo's um, lineup is better than Sega's? But how, how do you feel about that, mate? Just to get a bit off topic for a second. What? Well, Nintendo's... I'm saying that I don't think there's even a contest. Especially these days. We're not even giving out prizes for this. There's no point in competing. Right, yeah. But um, I, I was just excited, to be honest. And then it came out. I loved it. But uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So, next topic. How did it compare to uh, previous games? I want to do like the previous two. Uh, the handheld one, 7, and the console one, uh, Wii. And Helldragon, I'm going to go to you first. How did Mario Kart 8 compare to uh, Mario Kart 7? Um... Well, it pissed me off less. I'll uh, start with that, I guess. Yeah. Because, um, you know, apparently up until that point, uh, they weren't really doing the whole, uh, you know, like before 7 and all that, they weren't really doing the whole uh, customizable carts. Yeah. But um, when they added that, you know, you definitely got some more variety with uh, what you wanted to play. What I did like is that you didn't uh, have to lock down to a particular type of cart because you wanted to be a certain character. Like, say you want to play like Toad, you didn't have to get the little dinky machine they usually slap him in these games. You can just give him a big old boss hog, and it makes no sense, but at least you can sort of play how you wanted to play. I did like uh, that aspect of it. But um, Seven's really my only other experience with Mario Kart. I haven't really uh, touched the series otherwise. And uh, for me, Eight is just basically... Seven with a lot of noticeable upgrades and a few downgrades here and there. So overall, it's still an improvement, I think. Uh, same question to you, Morph. You could talk about seven if you want, but how does uh, eight compare to Mario Kart Wii? Um, well, I played a lot of Mario Kart Wii with uh, Techless, yeah. and we played online. Uh, Techless, for those of you who don't know, is another member of the HPod podcast uh, web group that we do. Whatever we do, I don't even know what we do. A games um, website. Yeah, <laughs> that again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know what? You're right. It's a games website. 
But we played a lot of Mario Kart Wii online, and uh, the online in that game was surprisingly good. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I was so surprised by it, and, um, well, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, that's how. Yes, <laughs> got it in one. But the Wii U's version of the online is just as good or better. Um, you can see at times that there is some lag problems. You can actually get, notice it. But because of it's Mario Kart, who, who really cares for the most part? It's not supposed to be that serious. <laughs> it's very stable once you're in a match. I've very rarely like gotten disconnected, but that's you know true. Oh yeah, yeah. In terms of disconnects, um, in the, in the, I'm thinking of the Wii version. I'm not sure if I ever got disconnected. Um, maybe once or twice for me, but uh, uh, would you say it's a noticeable like step up from Wii and I guess Seven as well? Um, I definitely would say it's a step up in some ways. Uh, I there were a lot of tracks in the Wii version that I liked. Um, that's, that's the, that's the, where the mall level comes from, right? Yeah, Coconut Mall was in Mario Kart Wii. Yeah, no, I, what I, I just love that that map had very blatant use of, like, using the Miis that were in your system and populating the map with them. Yeah. It was just great seeing a big poster that had Hitler on it every now and then. <laughs> I think everyone had that, me, honestly. The Hitler rides in games. <laughs> uh, but, um, as for me, um... <sighs> It was basically like a HD Mario Kart Wii, but with less bullshit, and obviously, you know, built on 7. So, uh, as far as it compares to the previous games, I would say there's no noticeable downgrade. But, uh, let, let's get into the core of things now, like... Hold on, hold on, are we, are we talking about, like, are we talking about battle mode here, too? Oh, we'll get to that, don't you Okay, worry. that's a separate topic. <laughs> I've, got, I've got, like, a sheet just, like, propped up in front of me. Ironically, it's resting on the gamepad right now. Um... And we're just going to like go down the list and just talk about various topics. I, sorry, I actually wanted to talk a little bit about Seven first as well, comparing it to Seven. I, <laughs> go ahead, mate. I'm the one getting ahead of myself now. I played a lot of Mario Kart Seven on the go. Like Mario Kart is a great game to play on a DS. Oh, DS, uh, I so think good. They or a 3DS in this in this case. I'm just saying DS generically. Um, it's like a Sega or a Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On your Nintendo handheld platform. Because it just lends itself really well. And then once, of course, they have the wireless uh, multiplayer, anyone else who has a DS, uh, you don't need a second game. I think they really, in 7, they really, I think they let you play every single track, except you had to be a shy guy. Which is a pretty damn good compromise. Because that means you can play on any race. Uh, I think in the DS version, they, they limited you to, like, uh, the first two cups. Yeah, I seem to recall like there were a few tracks. I think Bowser's Castle, but don't quote me on that. That like got omitted from online play. Well, I mean, uh, oh yeah, the DS one did have online play too, didn't it? Yeah, that's the one that started online play. And it was very good there too, <laughs> except for the fact that it had the uh the snaking exploit. Ah, uh, yeah. And and basically anyone who could snake perfectly was going to lap you. Oh yeah, I remember when that was out. They've uh, seemed to have, you know, kind of taken that out in the more recent ones, I've noticed. Yeah, but at the same time, like, for playing it in a single-player aspect, where you could exploit that against the AI, it was really fun. So, uh, let's round off uh, this particular topic by saying, I think Mario Kart's come a long way since the days of snaking and, you know, early online play. So, let's get to uh, proper criticisms, critiques, and start with a rather easy critique, uh, a low-hanging fruit of criticism, if you will. I'm just going to play Mario Kart 7 while we're talking, is that cool? <laughs> yeah, while well, I get to the bloody point. Okay, we're going to start with the character roster here, and uh, Helldragon, I want you to go first, because uh, this is probably going to be a topic where we end up talking over each other, so <laughs> I, I would ask the other person, M Mumph, you in this case, if you could just like wait until Helldragon's finished making his point before you come in, and then you can talk for as long as you want. So start playing some Mario Kart 7, we're going to be here for a bit. <laughs> There's no Iggy in this one, I don't know what to do. Oh, bitch, bitch, bitch. Go on, Helldragon, character roster. Well... <laughs> I really don't get why they added, like, four million babies and, like, all the people that are made of metal. Yeah. Like, last time I checked, turning people into minerals was not an acceptable substitute for making clones, you know? At least Falco is a different animal, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it was cool that the Koopalings got it added, or... No, 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 they're the Koopalings, my bad. I have no idea what the hell they're called anymore. Koopa Kids. They're the Koopa Kids. Uh, Koopa Kids, whatever the hell they are. I don't care. Um... 
But I mean, like, like, was there really a demand for the babies? I mean, like, I can't really... I'm sitting here trying to think of other characters to replace the babies, but I don't think, um, you know, pre-aged Mario is exactly a viable kind of pick. And then they, they're they pulling, like, these metal guys out of anywhere, everywhere, like Pink Gold Peach. Like, what kind of dice roll ended up on that? Why would that be a worthy addition? I don't know. Is it better than Waluigi? Eh, I just kind of... I'm not really uh, sure about that, but at least Waluigi is his own person, you know what I'm saying? Which is weird, because he wasn't in 7, yet a new or, you know, redone retro track of Waluigi Pinball was in. He's not in Brawl either, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Waluigi just can't catch a break, except in, you know, Brawl in the family, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, is that all you got to say about characters? Um, otherwise, you know, I pretty much like them. I guess my major uh, critique for some of the characters kind of has to do more with the gameplay. But in terms of the roster, really it's just the babies and the fucking metal people. Like, they should bring in, like, more metal people in Mario Kart 9 just to throw us off. Like, let's say we got, like, 10 Wario or Lead Luigi. <laughs> I, I'd main him. Okay, Mom, same question, but to you. Uh, the Koopa Kids were a fantastic addition to the game. Um, I think that those are the best characters that they've added. Uh, even though they're all essentially the same character, except different versions of it. I actually don't know how any of the others play. I just play Iggy. So actually, just Iggy's a fantastic addition. Screw all the others. Um, or whatever, you know. But the babies, you're right. The babies, there are too many babies. 400 of them, in fact. It's not that there's too met too many metal characters, because there's really only two. Well, I but, still think Pink Gold Peach is kind of like shit. Well, yeah, I don't like, know. Well, where does just, that even come from? Like, they just yeah. created that. Like, that's not even from something. Yeah, at least Metal Mario was in, like, Smash. Well, he's, no, Metal Mario's not in Smash. You pick up the metal... Oh, no, no, that's not, no, that's not true. He totally was. He was a boss in the first one. Yeah. So he's a, he's a real character. <laughs> he's a real boy. Is is this is this just is this another character announcement for Super Smash Bros. now? Pink Gold Peach? Man, if they put in Pink Gold Peach, I'm gonna be so mad, you know? <laughs> Even madder than Palatina and Lucina. Hey, Lucina is okay except for the fact that she's a clone of Marth. Otherwise I wouldn't actually care. I like Marth, so um I'm excited for Marth like characters, although um Robin looks better. The Mario Kart podcast, everyone. Hey, I asked about this ahead of time, and I and I was given the okay. Are you, are you done with like critiquing the roster of the game? Well, we pretty much it's 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 basically two points to say they added Koopa Kids and they took out a bunch of good characters for babies, and nobody nobody likes the babies. Okay, well uh, let's be honest. I don't think anybody was kind of missing that Queen Bee lady, you know. Where's where, where's Boo? Yeah, where is Boo? I'd like to race this Boo. Or Dry Bones. Whoever that is. Player, I, love, I don't think Dry Bones was in 7 either, was it? I'm playing it, and I would have picked Dry Bones if, if I saw him. Um, as for me, <laughs> I know you like the Cooper Kids month, but I don't see why 7 whole slots had to be, you know, eaten up or, you know, used. How would you feel if you were the Cooper Kid that wasn't included? Yeah, like, Morton's just sitting there, like, I I know they're definitely going to call today. <laughs> He's just sitting there looking at his phone. <laughs> Come on. If we're talking about characters that they shouldn't have added, it's the babies, not the Koopa Kids. Okay, well, yeah, you guys have already spoken for me on this thing. Um, I I would say, like, characters I want added in, you got to draw from other areas of the Mario universe. Bring in, like, Kamek. Who- Kamek would be awesome, yeah, totally add that guy in. I would totally race as that guy. I think it was meant to be in uh, Mario Kart 64, but was dropped at the last moment, now that I can actually finish my sentence. Thank you, Helldragon. <laughs> um, and, you know, people from the RPGs, maybe like Prince Peasley or someone. I'd take Prince Peasley over Queen Bee, honestly. Aren't, uh, aren't the RPG characters partially owned by Alpha Dream, though? Uh, well, they're a second party company to Nintendo, I well, think. Well, that's true, but still, you know, it tends to kind of waver. I don't know. I think that would be an interesting choice as well, like some of the more popular... Uh, RPG characters. Don't bring in Starlo because I don't think she's popular at all. <laughs> and she also lacks hands. It would be like putting a goomba yeah. in there. <laughs> Just drive with your feet. Come on, make it work. So, mostly we're bitching here about, you know, too many babies, too many metal people taking all our jobs and whatnot. You know, the lack of certain characters who have been like mainstays like Diddy Kong, 
Um, well, mainstay since Double Dash, I guess. Diddy Kong, Boo, Dry Bones, Peter Piranha, who's fucked off, which is odd, because, you know, he's usually without a job and available for anything that's going. I can understand the loss of Petey Piranha, especially when he's been turned into an item now. That must be demeaning. <laughs> what? But... You get to see a lot more of them now. Is that Peter Piranha, or is it just like a standard? I, I, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a standard, but I, I, I think the sentiment is still there. Yeah, we're getting really pedantic now. So, uh, overall, character roster, some okay choices. The Cooper kids, I guess, um, very objective. The me's there, so you know, I'm happy. I don't really need to play as anyone else. But uh, they really need to get a lot more creative in uh, Mario Kart Nine, I think. Wait, you, hold on. You, you, you say that when. And then you just say, but I'll just play the me character anyway. <laughs> well, I'm a very creative Mario Kart character. Or are you just saying that the lack of creativity is just such that you'd rather just play as yourself? Um, yes, good, yes, thank you. That's Brilliant, the, moving that's on. That's the point. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> okay, new tracks. Um, well, let's start with you on this one. What do you think of the new tracks? They I think a game? lot of them are pretty good. Uh, as usual, don't like the desert maps in general. Uh, favorites, probably... Uh, Mount Wario, of course. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what's the disco one called again? Electrodrome? Yeah, Electrodrome. That's not disco, though. Sorry, yeah, nah, it's like Rave one. The Mario Rave. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm i kind of tempted to classify some of the old tracks as new tracks, even, because they really only kind of spiritually uh, brought in some of them. Some of them were totally redone. We'll get to the old tracks next, don't worry. Just the new ones for now, please. Like, level design, you know, aesthetics and such. There are definitely some cool shortcuts uh, that I didn't know about when we were doing that tournament. Yeah. Uh, I watched some of your clips, and I was like, wow, you can make that jump in uh, Rainbow Road. You see that mountain over there? You can go to that. Yep, everything you see, you can go. <laughs> it's, the new Mar- it's the new Mario Kart open world game. <laughs> yeah, when's Zelda Kart coming in? I want to play as EGI and Uber. But overall... Are pretty good, would you say? But I think the designs are good. I think the designs are good. The music is good. I like how the music is dynamic with the tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, that really adds a lot to it. Although in multiplayer, I guess uh, it's only the person who's winning that gets to dictate the music. Uh, but I mean, I don't even know how you would solve that problem. But so. c- compared to Seven, would you say the tracks feel livelier? Um, I'm playing Seven right now, and I'm having a lot of fun. Like. I'm I'm not necessarily in full agreement that the uh, addition of anti gravity has improved the game. Uh, I kind of like the idea that they have that when you're in those anti gravity sections, though, that you can get speed boost by bumping into stuff. That's a totally kind of different way of thinking about it. Yeah, it's like y- your usual thinking is to avoid contact at all costs, but now since you can get speed boost, it's a uh, kind of a gamble. Okay, same question to you, Hell Dragon. Um. Well, you know, for me, uh. For the we're talking about just the new tracks at the moment, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, the anti gravity gimmick, uh, it's interesting, and I like how it can basically, you know, make some of the tracks turn in particular ways that you wouldn't normally expect. But I feel it's not entirely used to its best potential. Like, really, all it does is that sometimes it turns you upside down on the side i do like the whole bumping thing where basically when everybody gets on the anti-gravity track everybody's just kind of mashing into each other and becomes crazy that's fun i like that yeah um i'd have to say some of the new tracks are good i'd have to say you know some of my favorites are uh, sunshine airport uh, electrodrome yeah. is my absolute favorite uh track in that game that track is just amazing that's fun i think it's just got a great look, and you know, all the with the whole new HD focus, like all of them just look absolutely fantastic. But ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, um, like I said, you know, the whole anti gravity thing, it's neat, but at the same time, and you know, when I say it's neat, it's especially that's more important, I think, for the older tracks because when we talk about those, that's what I'll uh, say there, but you know. In, in terms of what it does for the tracks now, you know, it's a neat thing, like I said, and it can get into high-speed battles. You can knock some people off sometimes. It's pretty, you know, kind of crazy like that. But for the most part, I don't think it's as big of an impact on these track designs as it could be. Fortunately, you know, um, just the way they're designed and the music in general, just the overall feel of these various uh, new tracks, I I think makes them more worthwhile. Yeah. As for me, um, I'm pretty happy uh, with the majority 
of the new tracks in a uh, Mario Kart 8. I can't really like point to one and say that's bad. I can point to one or two and say like that's boring, like a uh, Bone Dry Dunes, which uh, uh, you know <laughs> nobody as, likes. Yeah, as Mumph said, uh, you know it's kind of a boring track. Decent music, kind of boring overall aesthetically, but um, it's. You know, an, an evolution of Seven's gameplay, and you know, a little bit of Mario Kart uh, Wii with the uh, 12 races and whatnot, which went down to, uh, I think it was 8 in Mario Kart 7? Uh, yes, it is 8 in 7. It was probably just because it was a handheld title and couldn't, uh, you know, handle the extra four races, but I digress. They've, you know, built on... Um, the uh, glider and the underwater focus of Seven, and, you know, thrown zero gravity into the mix, or anti-gravity, rather. Um, and it makes for, you know, some interesting, you know, level design shortcuts and whatnot. And as Hell Dragon said, the music and the aesthetics just helped to make them feel much more alive, which was my major problem with Seven. Overall, and this is probably going to hurt you intensely, Mulf, I find the game very bland, and I find the level design a tad dull in Seven. Um, I just think it's it's a traditional Mario Kart game, and that's why I like it, because the retro... Uh, see, I'm going to talk about the retro levels a little bit here. I'm sorry, I'm going to, but the retro levels are much better in 7. <laughs> okay, back to my opinion, then. But, uh, yeah, I, I love the new tracks. Mount Wario, Sunshine Airport, Toad Harbor, you know, Electrodrome. Um, even, like, Mario Kart Stadium, the very first level in the game, is just so fun to race through. Because while it is simple, and that was kind of a disparaging thing for uh, Seven for me, they just feel so much more alive. And it's very shallow to say it's because of you know the high definition and um, the you know lively music and such. But uh, you know it is what it is. And for the most part, the new tracks are pretty great. So you know I'm rambling now. So let's move on to the old or retro tracks. Um, Hell Dragon, going to start with you. Um, why? I haven't really... Well, okay, well, I do have a point I do want to make about the Retro Treks. Um, like I said, most of my uh, Mario Kart experience has to do with Mario Kart 7, Mario Kart 8, uh, things like that. Now, when I was playing through these old tracks, and I was actually comparing them to, like, the old ones, like, I was looking at videos of, like, all the different, like, beach tracks or city tracks or things like that. I love the upgrades that all of these tracks have gotten. Like, it's taken full advantage of what the Wii U can do, even if it's not as much compared to the other consoles, and it's added all these new extra elements in the background. Like, I think in... No, that was one of the new ones, but, like, in the new... Uh, in the airport one, like, the island in the background was actually an old track. Like, I forgot which one it was. Was it Woohoo Island or something like that? I, I think it was rumored to be Koopa Trooper Beach, but it may just be something that looks like Koopa Trooper Beach. Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, I was looking at all the old ones, and the way they've upgraded them is amazing, especially with the whole anti-gravity gimmick. I think that gimmick works better on the old tracks than the new ones, because it can take those old tracks that are, some of them are admittedly very simplistic, and adds a whole a lot of creative turns to them. Like, uh, Mario Circuit's one I keep thinking of whenever I think of that, uh, you know, an old track, because it took the anti-gravity gimmick and kind of just took a whole tr portion of the track and just kind of shoved it up in the air, and it made it a bit more interesting to me. So I think it really worked out more uh, for the retro tracks, and I'm also discovering uh, retro tracks I really like. Like, I like the old uh, um, Rainbow Road. Uh, TikTok Park, I think that was in 7? Clock, mate. The clock, TikTok clock, that was in the DS version, I yeah, believe. Yeah. That was in DS. Um, the music park, music park's the one I'm thinking of. That was in seven, and it's just kind of interesting to see how it all applies uh, together when they remade these tracks. I actually think I like more of the retro tracks in this game than I do the new tracks in this game. I'm going to agree with probably that sentiment as well. I um, seem to always be a fan of the retro tracks more than the new tracks in Mario Kart games. Even when the new tracks become retro tracks, yeah, somehow, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like recursive. I think I just like the the, the tracks that I'm familiar with, yeah. uh, and yeah. in this yeah. case, um, they've made a lot of the tracks that I'm familiar with less familiar. Um, and one of the tracks that they I thought they actually did a really good remake of, except for one aspect, is uh, the Rainbow Road from N64. It's just, why is it only one lap? I don't get it. 
It's too short. It's way too short. I agree. They probably could have like bumped it up to two, you know, make it kind of like a Warrior Coliseum kind of deal. Because if if you fall behind on that track, you, you, unless you get a blue shell, you're done. You, yeah, you're just not going to catch up. Yeah, that's kind of sad because I also really uh, like the design they brought in for that particular track in general, and it's becoming you know higher up one of my more favorite uh, retro tracks. So, um, Monk, would you say like the older tracks are better than the new ones, or do you think there's like a nice balance this time? Because it was obviously very one-sided in seven. Uh, I think in this case it's more it's more balanced, but I still at least personally lean, t- lean towards the classics. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's see. Next up, ooh, a bit of a controversial one. Item balance, Monk. I'm going to throw this one to you first. Yeah, you'll need to save all the time for me. <laughs> they definitely made some interesting changes that. Um were unexpected and and actually radically different. The I think the biggest of which is holding items uh, behind you does not uh, free them from your inventory to allow you to pick up another item. Yeah. Which is kind of a huge uh, change in, at least, I think it's mostly affected the defensive strategy of the kind of high-ranking players, or mostly first place. Which, when I think of it that way, I don't think of it as that be, of being that bad. Yeah, it's not a downgrade. Most of the other races are unaffected, and it's actually just kind of a balancing thing to try and keep Mario Kart again. Fun for everybody. <laughs> yeah, because we was chaotic, especially with 12 people. But I personally like holding items behind me, and that's what Mario Kart is. Some of the other changes, like the mushrooms going around you um, instead of uh, just holding them, uh, are weird, but... That's okay. I'm not. I'm okay with that change. Uh, but some of the new, the new stuff, though, I was just gonna get there. Um, the, I think the what is it? What do you actually call that? The speaker that emits a shockwave that can blow up blue shells. What's that called? Super horn. Super horn. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, the super horn is an interesting um, addition. Because you can use it both in just like a big crowd to just break away, and also, <laughs> yeah. of course, as a defensive thing in first place if you can manage to get a hold of one yeah. uh, and then end up in first place. It's pretty pretty awesome. That's actually what I wanted to bring up, the item distribution because uh, when you're in first place and you've got ten coins, you don't really need another coin. A <laughs> super horn would be nice. True. But that's not... At that point, the game's not thinking what do you need, it's thinking what do the other guys need. Fair enough. I've heard tell that it's like dictated by how far away you are from like the person in front. That that's what I am is going to give you. Is that true? I have no idea. I guess we'll have to look for the comments uh, of this particular Hellfire cast for the explanation. Uh, Hell Dragon, what do you think? Well, um, for those of you who were watching me um, when we were doing the whole uh, Mario Kart Eight tournament, I admit I may have complained a lot about some of the items. Uh, you know, that we were getting. Uh, actually, I did want to point this out. Um, we were intending, when the tournament got set up, we were intending to turn the items to frantic. And what that would have done was that it would have given more uh, offensive items, less items like bananas and coins and things like that. But Tom forgot to do that. I wasn't able to correct him and nobody else was able to because we could only see uh, our screen. We weren't able to see, you know, him set up the room right there. So admittedly, that's our fault. However... I do think the item distribution system, since it is apparently based on, you know, particular positions from other players as opposed to the position you are in the race, I think it needs some work. Like, in the back you'll get items you don't really need, like sometimes you'll get bananas for some reason, sometimes you'll get mushrooms that won't really get you ahead of the pack unless you're cutting corners. This is something I did fail to acknowledge. If you're cutting corners with mushrooms and starmen, in particular, that can be helpful, but you have to time it right. And at the same time, um, up, people up ahead of you are still getting uh, more items. Bullet bills rarely, you know, come up. Blue shells, you think that blue shells wouldn't come up that often, but I find they come up way more often than they need to. Like if bullet bill, not bullet bills, if blue shells were a bit rarer, I might not have as much of a problem with them, but they tend to pop up pretty fucking frequently. I found, you know, and of course, like Tom said, the useless coins you'll never need. I just, I really think, I mean, this is just my basic experience based on what I'm seeing in the game here. I'm not even comparing it to other games. I think 
I ha I want to say seven felt a bit more balanced in terms of handing out items, but I don't know what they did with the item distribution in this game, but I think it's really borked because most of the time you're getting stuff that's not going to able to let you catch up. And that's the point of the items in the game. It's supposed to even the odds out. Yeah, I agree. People up ahead, but if you're in the back, you ain't getting shit that you need. So I just think it's really kind of messed up. And the thing about coins is, yeah, they give you a little boost when you pop one, but if you're, like, carrying a coin and you get hit and you you have, like, ten coins and then you go down to seven, popping a coin is only going to give you two, so you're not going to instantly get back to top speed straight away. So it's a little bit pointless, to be honest. And there's plenty on the field anyway, so I don't know why they felt the need to make the coin its own standalone item. Yeah, exactly. And, like, the boost you get when you've got, like, ten coins and you pop a coin, it's so negligible compared to other items. I just really don't see the point. It's okay a little bit, I guess, when you're low to begin with, but like you said, you know, they're all over the fucking track. You might as well pick them up yourself. Um, how do we feel about the new items? You know, the super horn, the uh, the boomerang, and uh, the piranha plant thing. What do you think, Mumph? Uh, well, the boomerang is cool. Uh, it's a cool item. You throw it, uh, it comes back after you know, it comes back twice, and then the third time you throw it, it goes... Does it go farther the third time? Um, I've got no idea, but I use it to troll Ted on that one Mario Kart Stadium thing, so that's all that matters to me. Yeah, uh, but the, the thing about it is it only causes kind of a slight spin-out, not a full kind of, like, crash, like the shells do. Yeah, I felt it wasn't really that offensive or, you know, compared to other items like shells. Yeah, but the fact that you can use it multiple times, uh, I think, makes up for that fact. And you can still throw it backwards and forwards. Um, the coins, yeah, I think I agree with your guys' sentiment. I think it's dumb that they're an item that they take up a randomization slot. If if nothing else, they take up a randomization slot. Yeah. Um, and the piranha plant, I think, is a cool addition. It's pretty fun. Um, I like I like it. It gives you like little mini boosts and and the ability to just chomp people in front of you. And uh, it each. Like, shells and stuff that are fired at you, too. And banana... Like, yeah, it just, like, clears the way in front of you. Swallows up coins as well. Oh, does it do that? Yeah. So it'll reach out and grab coins that you drive past? Yep. Oh, okay, that's really cool. Yeah, the piranha plan is actually really good. Like, you have to time it appropriately. But, you know, when you do and you're driving by people getting all stuff, it's a really great offensive and defensive tool. I think it's a really solid addition. And the best part about it, when you go over a ramp and you do a trick, the piranha plant will follow suit and do a trick as well. That is, like, the best feature of it, I think. <laughs> and uh, the super horn, probably, I wouldn't say controversial, but I don't even want to call it a game changer, because it just does not come around frequently enough to be of use against the blue shell. Yeah, yeah, my big problem with the super horn is that you know, p people were hyping it up as the whole, oh, it's the blue shell killer, but the point is, if you're trying to use it as a counter to the blue shell, like you said. It barely comes up to be of use. You're pretty much most of the time going to be using it against other stuff. And my second point is, why would you make a counter for the blue shell that barely comes up when you should just nerf the blue shell directly? The blue shell still has a lot of problems with it, I think. I still felt this way even, you know, when I was playing 7. The blue shell needs to be nerfed. Like, seriously, you don't need to make, like, an item that barely comes up just on the off chance you might be able to counter it. It doesn't work that way. Mm, well, I still prefer the blue shell to the whole Hornet thing in Race and Transform, and that's really neither here nor there. Uh, what do you think, uh, before we move on, about the Super Horn in general, Move? Uh, I thought I talked about it earlier. <laughs> well, say it again, being the correct topic. Um, well, I thought that it was, it was a good addition, um, but yeah, it doesn't come up enough. Uh, when you're in first place to effectively use it. And um, that, I don't know, I, the fact that the blue shell was, you think the blue shell's overpowered, I thought for a long time it was underpowered in Mario Kart games. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the transition they made from it uh, in N64 where it went along the track and hit everybody who was dumb enough to be in the center of the path. Um, and... Then I believe in Double Dash and the DS and a couple others, it just flies through the air and just nails the person in first place. That's it. And anyone who's around him. Uh, my problem with the blue show isn't really in the fact that it's overpowered. It's got a specific purpose. My problem is that it feels like the game is basically jumping out of his way to make sure that the person in front who had the skill to get up there isn't, 
you know, able to keep that streak going. It just feels like a really heavy-handed way to balance the game. That's my big problem with the blue shell. As an item, I guess it's fine. I just think you kind of need to tone down what it does to make it feel like the game not slapping you in the face or being too good at it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a way to avoid it without, like, you know, an unnecessary item. Maybe just make it, you know, more skill-based rather than item-based. Yeah, that's my, and that's my, and that's why I like the swarm, uh, from All Stars Racing Transform. It may not be the best, most iconic Sega item. I'm not sure what you would pick, but at least you can avoid it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and uh, on that note, I think we're done with item balance. So let's move to aesthetics now, which is a thing I really want to talk about. Graphics and music. Uh, Hell Dragon, let's start with you. What do you think about how the game uh, looks and sounds? I think, you know, for the Wii U especially, it looks great. Like, they have a lot of great, you know, lighting effects. All the places and the new tracks look very distinct. I mean, I know you were talking about, like, a, what was it, Bone Dry Dunes? That's the new desert one i mean that track kind of sucks i'll be honest but it does look really good i love the bone aesthetic mixed in with the desert you know sands and things like that it looks great i like um like i can't i can't really say i hate any of the particular designs for the new tracks and how they've really upgraded the old tracks thanks to you know just how they look combined with the anti-gravity mechanic. I just think they all look great. Okay, well, Donut Plains kind of sucks, but it's always sort of sucked. Well, it's nice and sunny, at least. I guess. That's something to consider. Even then, you know, they added, like, those bridges with the water and things like that. Sounds pretty good, too. Um, My favorite thing to do, I don't think... This doesn't really carry over um, with any other... Like, if you're racing with other people, they don't hear this. But each character has their own distinct horn. So pretty much I want a horn in times in the music whenever I win. I love that bit. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Mom, for graphics and music? Uh, I think the graphics are really nice. The game is really sharp looking. Um, it's still got like some rough edges as someone who comes from the PC world. Uh, it definitely looks like a game that could have been on the Xbox 360 or PS3. Yeah, it's got a lot of jaggies, basically. Um, yeah. But the fact that it runs pretty much 60 frames per second all the time is pretty good. Uh, of course, when you go into four-player split-screen, or three, even three-player split-screen, um, it drops down to 30, or possibly it floats somewhere. But it's definitely not 60. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely feel a distinct uh, loss of smoothness. But the artistic style of the game is really good. Um... And they really pull it off from a technical per- point of view up until you start racing with three or four people. <laughs> yeah. and w- but the one thing I really wish they would have been able to pull off from a technical point of view is uh, doing split screen with the gamepad as a- one of the full screens and the TV as the other full screen. Well, uh, this is something uh, they're actually doing for Hyrule Warriors, so obviously they're learning in that regard. Well, I think it just depends on what game you're doing and how how you spend your technical resources. I don't think Hyrule Warriors is quite as demanding of a game as uh, high quality. Well, it's fucking Mario Kart. Dynasty Warriors. Just based what on the expect? past of Dynasty Warriors, exactly. But um, I, I fucking love how Mario Kart 8 looks. Um, <laughs> I won't say it's one of the best looking games ever, but you know, for the standards uh, of the console, it's on. It looks great. It sounds great. It's one of the best Mario Kart soundtracks by far. Oh yes, the sound. The sound is great. Yeah. It is great, month 2014. I, I did want to mention, um, like, I, I do think on some of the tracks, the soundtrack really helps it. Like, you know, you were talking about Mario Stadium, and it's a very basic, you know, opening track just to get you used to it. But the music is awesome. You just feel like, oh, man, I'm going to go race. This is going to be the best thing ever. And this is before you got to Rainbow Road, so those d- hopes weren't dashed yet. Yeah, yeah. But still, you know, it feels really good to race on that kind of track just because of that music. I love how it complements it. I have always said that music can like either make or break a game because there are some terrible games, like Sonic 06, which play like shit but have a fantastic soundtrack if it was dull you know really banal music tracks like sonic chronicles yeah i, I was w- fixing to say 
I wouldn't play the game at all. But since it has, you know, a good musical score, I can, you know, swallow that amount of crap for a little bit at a time. You know, if the loading screen's gone for a bit too long, I'm out of here. But, uh, um, oh, one last thing. Uh, graphically, they really improved the character models. Like, it's a massive, massive step up from Wii and 7. Luigi Death Stare. Yes, the Luigi Death Stare. Thank you. Yeah, man. yeah, gotta mention that, I guess. Well, I mean, that's part of the character models, right? Exactly. They're just so... The, the faces especially, because, you know, usually the bodies are decent, but the faces are very static. And every single character just emotes amazingly well, which is weird, because you don't really see the perspective, like, from the front. So, for the most part, unless it's in a replay, you don't need to see that. But they went out of their way to make it as, make the characters as expressive as possible. Um, I think they made Donkey Kong a little bit too expressive. He is the stuff of nightmares. But besides that... It looks great, it sounds great, and I'm rambling now, so uh, next point, ooh, now we move to online. Uh, Helldragon, I'm going to start with you, and uh, the first subtopic of this, I guess, is uh, the tournament mode. Oh, we got to outline this for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Um, you know, I kind of agree with you when you were talking about this when we were doing the tournament. Uh, it kind of sucks that there's no, like, cup mode, where you can just, like, go through each cup in order. That kind of sucks, and you have to rely on the whole, um... You know, the whole, they randomly pick tracks for you. On the one hand, I like how it discourages track spamming. But at the same time, you know, with the tournament mode, we should have been able to have a bit more control for that. With just, like, normal online play, the random track thing is fine. Um, I guess another uh, thing I'd like to see with tournament mode is, um, I don't know how they would do this, but they had some sort of bracket system that might be interesting. You know, maybe have, like, teams kind of just race against each other, like, more than two, and uh, see who comes out on top. Okay, well, what do you think about that, Uh I think that you might be overthinking how seriously people take Mario Kart, but then again, you're someone who is taking Mario Kart this seriously, thus counterproving my point. Oh, come on. I, I love this. I love this complaint, you know? And uh, you know what? Okay, okay, I'm going to be... Perf- I mean, I did complain a lot during that tournament, and I accept that, and I apologize. But I don't think it's wrong to want the items to get cleaned up a little bit. That's not wrong at all. All right, I understand they're there to shoot at people. Oh, sorry, I was talking about like the term. I was talking about the tournament stuff there. Well, you know what I mean. No, no, it's still the same factor. You know, I kind of want the game to be cleaned up a little bit. That doesn't mean I have to take it super seriously and treat it competitive. No, that's going to be for Smash. Then I'll be really butt mad about stuff. Look forward to that. <laughs> okay. Um. Tournaments, uh, I, I guess I could talk about the online as a whole. In some ways it's improved, in others it's become really restrictive. Like, why do I have to completely back out of online to just simply change my build, you know, my cart build? Yeah, I hate that too. It's just, and um, with the whole, uh, the rooms really do feel restrictive in that regard. You can't, I wish they had lobbies. Like, that kind of game is craving for some sort of lobby system. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Especially to make it easier to set up your own. It really needs that kind of thing. And, um... Unless you're playing like one on one with a friend, as you can see in uh, the opening days of Mario Kart 8, you're restricted to instead of being able to choose from every track, like in uh, Wii, I think it was maybe seven, but I didn't play that one online much. Um, you have like three automated choices and then random. And for all, for all I know, you know the random choice could land on one of the uh, three choices it gives you. So there's not really much choice there. It's just like another. <sighs> Example of Nintendo going, this is the way you will play our game. You do not get a choice in this matter. Well, you know, like I said, uh, I can see the upside so that, you know, tracks aren't spammed. It'd be nice if that option, you could toggle it. Like, say, you know, for the whole tournament mode, or you're just kind of messing around with friends, you can just switch on and off which you want to choose. I think that would have been better, and especially, um you know, available in just, like, regional. And, again, you could sort that by lobbies. I think that would have been a better option. Um, is that about all we have to say for, like, tourneys and whatnot? I, I simply think you should be able to just go through a Grand Prix online if you want to, with 12, like, with 12 people. Uh, I guess, what, w- what would you do if people drop out? Do you replace them with other random people? Or do you just replace them with AIs at that point? I guess maybe that's the solution. I don't know. AIs that represent you, that's what happened in the opening days. Drivatars. <laughs> Drivatars, exactly. Mario Kart needs Drivatars. 
Like, for some reason, the game just, like, drops you a bit too often for my taste. I'm just sitting there, okay, maybe I don't understand the internet info structure. All right, they don't hire me for this kind of stuff. And I'm sitting there going, how hard must it be to get 12 people in the same room to race? <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess we should talk about, I, don't, I really don't want to, but I guess we should talk about battle mode now. Mom, if I'm going to throw this one over to you, since I'm going to assume you've played battle mode more. I've played it once. I was talking about the franchise as a whole, but yeah. Oh, okay, 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 good. Uh, I played Mario... <laughs> I played... No, I only played the Mario Kart Battle Mode in Mario Kart 8 once. And I debatably had a be- had a good time. Uh, but it's not the Battle Mode that I grew up with. Ugh, that it um, is not. But the Battle Mode I grew up with is Mario Kart 64, Skyscraper, uh, Block... Fortress and Double Decker, and a little bit of Big Donut, but we not really. Yeah, I, I remember us playing that like uh, via netplay, and that was so fun. And that compared to this, it's like a, a world apart, like a world's difference. We really. did do that at one point, didn't we? Oh, jeez, that was crazy. <laughs> it's going back a ways now, but what do you think, Hell Dragon? Explain how battle mode works for us, please. Um, now. I have, I, I actually have a bit of sort of card experience with battle mode. Most of it is in Crash Team Racing, but I think it applies here because, uh, you know how it works in Mario Kart 8. Instead of doing the whole arena thing, you know, like, they kind of set it on the tracks themselves. And I'm sitting there going, like, when I first heard about it, I was like, well, what the fuck is the point of that? You won't be able to find each other. I, I, everybody's all stretched out and stuff, and then when you die, you become this ghost, and you keep messing with people, but they don't know what hit them. It just, it's, I have no idea why they changed that formula. Because of that, I have not touched battle mode um, in Mario Kart Wii U, you know, 8. I have played it uh, once in 7, which was, again, more like the battle mode I'm familiar with, the stuff from Crash Team Racing, which, again, you know, took inspiration from Mario Kart. We're all just basically karting with each other. At this point, some kind of weird vehicular incest thing going on. Ugh. Ugh, I know. <laughs> but I'm just sitting there going, well, I have no idea why they decided to change it. And I guess this is just hopeful thinking at this point. But I really do hope Nintendo at least kind of recognizes this a little and maybe throws together like four arenas or something and has that as DLC. Because... I don't see a lot of battling going on on tracks that are designed for racing. It just makes no sense to me. Well, b- before we move to like the uh, the final topic, um, I'll just say that while I in no way think that 8 was rushed, I think they compromised in a lot of areas just to try and get a finished product. Like, they focused on the aesthetics, the music, and the track design, and just getting that sort of thing set up. Stuff like Battle Mode, ever since, like, I would say Double Dash onwards, has been more of an afterthought. Nintendo just seemed to care about the racing aspect of the franchise more. And honestly, while I do as well, I would much rather have Battle Mode fans happy than have Battle Mode fans a bitch. And honestly, with 8, they have every reason to, because the complete and utter lack of arenas is something Thing that should be criticized and you know th- there should be a point or two knocked off because it's a gimped feature you know it's not a rushed feature they just didn't bother with it at all they just tweaked the uh, design of the courses slightly so you know you could not go somewhere you can go over as more easily and that's it now so, you yeah. do, now you do say that it wasn't rushed but do you think maybe they kind of also compromised on it because at the time the wii u really needed a killer app um yeah, I, I suppose, but, you know, when I think rushed, I think, like, unfinished levels, I think, you know, clippy music, you know, lost features, basically, and, you know, battle mode is there, it's just compromised, so it's not what it should be. Think back to, like, Mario Galaxy, or, I, I think Mario Galaxy 2 would be a better example, where you fought, I think it was, like, an armadillo boss on, like, a, um... A, a planetoid of sorts, and he was rolling around the world and whatnot. Stuff like that would be fantastic for a game that's primary gimmick is anti-gravity. Yeah, that's actually a good point. They really should have taken that anti-gravity and applied it to battle mode. That would have been kick-ass. Um, I think that could have worked. Uh, I mean, that definitely could have worked. Um, 
The only track that I did play in battle mode, and the one that, the only one that you could even debatably start to say works in battle mode, was Yoshi Valley. Because that one just has the multiple paths, and that's true. Because Yoshi Valley really does seem kind of like a battle mode arena in some ways. I mean, it, it just has the multiple paths. It has big open fields that you can go into. Like it has, it's a big map, and there's lots of places to go, all, lots of alternate paths. It actually didn't just feel like a race on that one, especially when you can go any direction at that point. Now, granted, there is a map, if, you, if you're playing on the gamepad at least, I'm not sure how this works for people who uh, use like Classic Controller Pro and such, um, and you can expand it, which I didn't do in opening days, and I apologize for that, but um, when I'm racing, I don't really have the time to you know, switch from um, game to uh, map, which I play on the pad mostly, I should point out, and um, I I don't know. I I just think it stinks of compromise. You know, making altered tracks instead of proper arenas. But um, that's enough bitching about battle mode, I guess. So you y- you all saw how uh, it plays out. I guess it would be better with CPUs and more characters. But um, you need like fifty people on that. That would be the best, actually. I would try that. <laughs> uh, let's come to the last topic now. What do you want to see from Mario Kart Nine? Hell Dragon, I'll start with you. Well, I've thought about this for a bit, and I admit a lot of these are amateur game design hour ideas. Uh oh, look out, Ego Raptor. <laughs> I'm gonna make a sequelitis about it, but. <laughs> no, no, that's mean, I apologize. But, you know, I really. Beyond the obvious ones, you know, obviously add a battle mode, kind of fix the item distribution, um, make take the anti gravity do it again that was fine just kind of maybe put a different spin on it i have no idea what you would do personally they're not paying me enough to think of that <laughs> but if they took that and they added on that i think that would become a really cool you know recurring feature another thing i kind of wish they did was that instead of customizable builds because here's another problem i do have with mario kart 8 in that when you're playing online um you tend to see a lot of the similar stuff which tends to happen when you have customizable, you know, options in a game. People tend to find particular builds and stick with them. That's why you see, like, Bowser and Waluigi and Roy and Rosalina online all the time, because the heavy characters with the right builds tend to be most dominant. What I would personally do is that I'd have cards not based on, you know, customizable parts in terms of that... They wouldn't give stats. Like, you'd be able to modify which cart you use, but it's purely cosmetic. What you would do instead, I think would be really neat, is if they had different chassis that were based on different strategies. Like, this one is the speed one that has to go up front, but low traction could get in trouble. This one focuses around using items in special ways. This one could cut corners. Well, kind of, you know, focus around strategies as opposed to just purely the stats, which I think kind of hurts um, some of the online play of Mario Kart, if they did something like that and kind of at least downplayed it a little bit to so that you'd be able to see more characters, like you'd be able to pick a lightweight and you wouldn't have to have a super specific build to make it work out. If they could just ease up on that a little for Mario Kart 9, I think that would be a huge improvement personally. Okay, what about you, Move? Um, I really haven't given much thought to what the next Mario Kart would be because we're not going to see it for a <laughs> long time. And, and honestly... On what platform would we see it on? The Wii U, too! <laughs> well, the next one would be a portable one, right? Yeah, it seems to go portable, or, well, console portable, console portable. The 4DS, it transcends time and space. But, I, I don't know, have, have Nintendo's never put out a Mario Kart on the same platform twice, right? Uh, no, it's, uh, you're thinking of Zelda in that regard. Well, no, 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 I'm, I'm thinking of Mario Kart, and I'm just confirming that they've never done that. No, no, I'm just giving you an example. It's Zelda, where they put two games on the same platform. Mario Kart okay, makes gotcha. it up. Okay. So I, I don't even know what I'd expect from a, a new Mario Kart at this point. More babies. More people that are made of metal for some reason. I, I think, I, I guess I would like to see it kind of maybe go back a little bit in the direction of older Mario Karts, and maybe scrap that whole, like, item holding behind you thing, not using up your item and just kind of go um like oh yeah that, that is, i don't know i don't know what they're gonna do next like are they gonna just keep it anti-gravity is anti-gravity gonna always be here now all the races will be upside down like like can 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 the game get 
can it go back to a point where it's less exciting because it's not going upside down? <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of like um, going from Galaxy to 3D land, if you will. Nintendo kind of wrote themselves into a corner with the whole gravity gimmick in my car aim. I don't know, 3D land was a fantastic game. It, it, it was. It wasn't a bad game at all. I just personally found it very safe and a little bit bland. Well, until you get to the... Are we, are we allowed to talk about the, the second half of the game? So that other thing... The real part of the game, you well, mean? Apparently, that was a big. It was a big deal not to talk about that at the time of launch. For it's the part where Bowser game. shoots a guy. That part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gangster Bowser, the ultimate boss. But I, I completely get what you're saying, mate. It's a little bit, you know, early to be thinking about the next game when we're currently enjoying this one. Because I don't know the platform, and I just don't know where they're going to go from here, and I don't know where I even want them to go with it. I just will probably pick it up if it looks good. Like, because it's <laughs> you're the most indecisive Nintendo fan I've ever talked to, mate. Right? Because they're also opinionated. <laughs> uh, yeah, normally, but like I said, I'm 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 kind of a Nintendo fan by kind of historical attachment. Le- less so, actually, a big fan these days. I just want to see Metroid. Like, put Samus in the game. There we go. Put Samus in the game. Okay, thank you. Finally, okay, here and forth. So put, put a Metroid track in. Let's put, let's add Metroid to Mario Kart. There we go. Add there Crystal go. for some it. reason. <laughs> okay. Um. Basically, what I want is I want an improved Mario Kart 8. And I know that sounds like a very just throwaway criticism, but I want them to take anti-gravity, build on it, make more complex tracks, because I forget which member of Hellfirecom said this, but they said the tracks feel really bland, because they lack a defining gimmick. For the most part, it's pretty much just very simple designs, uh, you know, with, you know, the usual shortcuts and opportunities for anti-gravity, and I agree with that. Um, but even, even though I like the design much more than the simple ones in the uh, 7, honestly, I think I'm being a bit graphics hoary here. It's, you know, the music and, you know, the aesthetics that make the difference between games. But, uh, a, a little bit more complex in the next one. Um, a better character roster, obviously. You know, take chances. You know, you've got your mainstays of Mario and Luigi, but bring in, like, I don't know, four full, uh, you put maybe people from the sports games. Just throw King K. Rool in there. Who gives a shit? He's not going to be in Smash Bros. That's for uh, fucking shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, music, I don't really ever have to complain about. Uh, online, lots more options. You know, you, 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 you're missing out here, I think. Fix battle mode, it's not really acceptable as is. And just take a chance and make it jam-packed with options. And especially for single player, the fact that they took out stuff like mission mode and stuff like that is ridiculous because th- there was no reason to let it go at all. Um, also, after you add the Mercedes-Benz, could we get like a DLC car based on Firebird Trans Ams? Because I would totally love that. That's a slippery slope, Nintendo. It's a slippery slope. Be careful. Well, you know, they had the Blue Falcon in Wii, so, uh, you know, Captain Falcon next game, maybe? No, he's probably going to have to piggyback on Mario Kart 8. I think I think there's a potential danger as to there's, uh, as to where um, many of the missing Donkey Kong characters are. They're stuck in the barrels. <laughs> well, I'm hearing a lot of rumors of a, of a Diddy Kong Racing 2. Please, yes. I want it. I'm okay with that as long as it as long as Retro Studios is as far away from it as possible, and then they're making a Metroid game, or if they're making a Metroid Diddy Kong Racing. Just make a Metroid, okay, guys? I don't even care who the fuck's in it at this point. Well, they said they've got plans for 2D and 3D Metroid, so we'll have to see where that goes. But I, I guess the only thing I have to say is, uh, Hell Dragon, out of ten, what would you give Mario Kart? 8? I'd give it a eight. Yeah, I'm going to give it an 8 as well. Okay, we got an 8 from Hell Dragon, an 8 from Month, and I'd have to say 8 as well, because while it is a very, very good game, it's missing a few features, it's nerfed in some areas. Again, not rushed, but compromised, I think, to you know help the Wii U out and whatnot. Great looking game, plays great, courses are good, music's you know fantastic, but um, not perfect. So, so, a solid base to work on, I think. But uh, at this point, we've been rambling for past an hour, so, uh, well, maybe less than an hour when I you know cut up stuff and whatnot. But uh, thank you all for listening and we shall see you all next time for another edition of the Hellfire cast. Bye-bye.